I'm Tiffany. And I'm Rihanna, and welcome or welcome back to Fresh Off the Bro. Fresh Off the Bro is about personal experiences growing up Asian American in a predominantly white community, Asian media, and Asian pop culture in general. Race has always been a sensitive topic. Every day, there are debates over race. With our podcast, we intend to shed light on the experiences of first generation Asian immigrants, not put them on a pedestal. We understand that race isn't everything the shortened acknowledgement of people of color, the knowledge gap, and the racial divide that will ideally be broken. Now that that's out of the way, let's get into the episode. Today, we will be talking about the viral sorbet and berry TikTok situation. So today, we're going to be approaching this episode a little bit differently from normal. Um, Normally, both of us like research a topic, discuss it together beforehand, and then present it to you guys. But today, it's going to be me explaining a situation to Tiffany and Tiffany's going to be reacting in real time well technically recorded time but in real time to us right now yeah I'm I'm here for the ride I have hmm. no idea what any of this is about when Rihanna proposed this to me and uh she mentioned I mean she proposed it to me by asking me if I knew who uh, sorbet were or are had I don't know how to word that but mm-hmm. and I I said no I, I didn't have no idea what she was talking about and she was like oh you are in for a for a trip uh huh and now we're here hmm so if I'm you taking don't know you all is, with me if yeah. I'm going down yeah if you guys don't know who sorbet is don't worry because Tiffany doesn't either and I will be explaining everything from the beginning yay. Let's start off with explaining what sorbet is. So sorbet spelt S-O-R-B-3-T, like sorbet, but with a three instead of the E. Um, It is a California-based indie idol group. Um, That's how they explain themselves. But to give a little more context, we're talking indie Japanese idol group. That is what they are trying to be. Um, the group is comprised of three girls or three people. Uh, I don't know if I've seen some people refer to Barry with um, non like what's, what's the word? Uh, like, they them pronouns? Yeah, they them pronouns. Um, but I'm not exactly sure. I don't think they've officially said anything, but there are three people okay. in this group. Two of them are white, one of them is East Asian. Um, I know for a fact that they are not Japanese the East Asian one. Um, I'm pretty sure that they are Chinese. Don't quote me on that, but I know they're not Japanese and they are East Asian. So this idol group, um, they haven't officially debuted yet. Um, Their TikTok page at the time when this situation came out um, was just them like doing cute little behind the scenes videos or like doing um, like dance videos um lots of like k-pop j-pop music in the background or k-pop j-pop trends Uh um things like that you could tell just based on their videos how they dance and how they like speak they're trying to be an idol group obviously okay Um, and they also use a lot of filters in their videos a lot of like brightening filters i find like it makes them look white. Or oh, you mean like Asian beauty f- uh, filters? I almost said yeah. future. Future. Um, I don't know if it's like, it's like a TikTok filter. So I don't know if it's like okay. meant to do that. But I think that they were purposefully trying to get the screen to be lighter. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, okay. Styled like like East Asian beauty filters. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Um. So yeah. So their TikTok was just them you know, trying to hype up the, the group, um, get some promo out there, get their name out there. And, you know, I don't think they were quite known by any of these TikToks. Like, there was quite a few TikToks before the TikTok that blew them up, right? Um, so, the TikTok that blew them up was a video of them demonstrating their call and response. So if you don't know what a call and response is for people listening, um, it's a typical thing in especially idol groups 
where they will say like shout something out like a specific phrase or a word and then the fans are supposed to respond um sometimes in k-pop groups people make their own like song chants like saying the um, group members names um to the beat of the song or like very specifically or sometimes especially j-pop groups um will teach fans the call and response that they want like specifically um there will be an example in the tiktok so i'm not going to give an example i can't think of a call and response on my own um but yeah so their video their tiktok is essentially just them saying like hi everyone this is us explaining our individual call and responses and each person um explains their call and response in the tiktok so I think now is a good time for Tiffany and for you guys to watch the specific TikTok in mind. One, two, so sweet. Hello, we are Sorbet. We are an idol group based in California. And today we wanted to teach you guys our call and responses. Yay. Hello, I'm Alice and I am the green member of Sorbet. Um, and my emoji is a little four-leaf clover and I like to bring luck to all of my fans. So for my call and response, I sort of incorporate that. It's pretty simple. Basically, I'm just gonna go lucky, lucky, and then all together go Alice. Ready? Lucky, lucky, Alice! Thank you! Hello everyone, my name is Barry, and I'm the leader and pink member of Sorbet. So I'm gonna teach you my call and response. So I start off by saying, Strawberry, and then you repeat back, Blueberry. And when I ask, who's everyone's sweet idol, you're gonna say, Betty John. Are you ready? Strawberry, Blueberry. Mina no amai idol wa, Betty John. Hi, hi, Betty Desu. Hi, guys, I'm Ash. I'm the red member of Sorbet. I'm gonna teach you guys my call and response. So mine is based off my Oshi March, which is the red dragon mahjong tile. And quick history lesson, um, my call and response includes two moves from mahjong, hon and kan. Hon is a three of a kind, which represents sorbet as a trio. And then kan is a four of a kind, which represents sorbet, and as well as you guys. So mine's pretty long, but bear with me. It's gonna go clap, clap, hon, hon, clap, clap, kan, kan, clap, clap. And then I'm gonna call dumo which is a winning move in Mahjong. And then I'm gonna go, it's my victory. All right, ready? One, two, 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 one, Thank you guys. Now that you've seen the video, you have a little more context. Um, what is your reaction, Tiffany? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that speaks for itself that is my reaction okay mm -hmm. I there are a lot of things that you notice mm -hmm. from the video mm -hmm. such as the way they talk mm -hmm. they're a child kind of childish Mm -hmm. like baby voice kind of thing mm -hmm. going on here which makes me a little uncomfortable mm -hmm. and then I wasn't expecting them to speak Japanese yeah I think that was a lot of people's reactions because it was like okay maybe they're just a j-pop style group they're gonna make music in English because a lot of people do do that um but no <laughs> Mm -hmm. And then, sorry, I just stopped. <laughs> She's speechless. I know, I know. I I don't, I don't know what to say. Yeah. I um, I I'm pretty. I wasn't really ready for this. I mean, <laughs> I I was ready, but I also wasn't because Rihanna didn't want me to watch anything yeah. before watching it with everyone here. And so I wasn't really mentally prepared for anything. Yeah, no. This is a live, raw reaction. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's definitely very Asian style. Mm -hmm. The the way they talk, the, the childish 
voices are making me a little uncomfortable, especially when they were demonstrating the call and response, the responses. Yeah. yeah. And then the the way they move, especially the pink one, Barry. Yeah. yeah. It's very anime. Uh-huh. Very much so. Um and the things you're saying are pretty much like how the internet reacted at first um so people's reactions to this were like initially just oh god what a cringe video you know um it's a trend to be making fun of like cringy cosplayers or cringy anime fans um so this falls like right into the category of that um lots of people actually funny because the first time I was introduced to this situation was not the original video it was someone lip-singing to the video um and like making like really animated gestures and I heard the sound and I was like okay this isn't this person speaking obviously um so what is this so I clicked the sound and then I've like deep dived into this entire situation um But maybe that was like when the video came out, a day after the video came out, again, the initial reaction was very, very typical internet. We're going to make fun of these people, um, clown them. And a lot of people specifically targeted Barry. Um, Also, by the way, I forgot to mention this before the TikTok, but Barry is not like B-A-R-R-Y. Barry is like strawberry berry, (laughs) B-E-R-R-Y. just to clarify um but so people were specifically targeting Barry because as you may have caught on in the TikTok they're very clearly the one who wanted to do all this they're the most animated they're the most excited and when they speak their call and response is very um I don't know there's something about that the way that they present their call and response they present themselves it's very clear that they were the one who, not dragged, but the inter- people on the internet were saying like, oh, Barry's the one who dragged everyone to do this because they're the leader kinda, of the group. You know what I mean? I kind of see what you mean. It, mm-hmm. I I got a Power Puff Girls vibe. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, also, this is just a small thing and I I don't know how to say this without it sounding kind of mean okay the last call and response was kind of long very long I mean <laughs> it was it was a little complicated for a call and response a little and she, like she, they 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 did acknowledge that mm-hmm. but it, it was it was kind of long yeah um funny you mentioned that because again when people were like discussing sorbet and everything um a lot of people were like what was that last one it's so long and so complex but I already forgot it yeah um but again as the situation morphed and this the focus went more towards Barry um people started being like oh no like I last I like the last call and response it's fun it's interesting Um, it's thoughtful for sure it is it's incredibly complex which you know that's kind of cool but like the whole point of a call and response is to be quick and for have fans remember it like mm-hmm. I don't know anyways enough about the actual <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah call and response mm-hmm. um so yeah so the internet initially reacted with this is cringe making fun of Barry um then you know they like people explored the other videos and see they're dancing to other k-pop songs other j-pop songs you know just being like look at these like anime fans or like japanese like weeaboos essentially um and then you know as it got more widespread people began to be like hey this is actually pretty problematic um due to the way that barry says her call and response or their call and response um it also seems like they're fetishizing Asian culture or like J-pop culture, um, which I'll elaborate into that more. But as soon as they hit that point, 
of people being like, hey, this is actually, it leads into a bigger issue. They got doxxed. <laughs> Which. Wait, what? Yeah. So everyone started to point out, hey, this is an actual problem. You should be apologizing. You're contributing to a bigger issue of Asian fetishization. And then there, if you don't know what dox is, uh, it means that their per, like addresses got leaked out to the internet. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah. And so once we hit that point, they made a video saying, hey, we apologize. Or I don't think it's they said we apologize or we understand that we did something wrong. However, I don't think we should be getting doxxed. We're going to be taking a break from TikTok. Yeah, that's not a nice. No, I am thoroughly impressed that the internet is able to do this time and time again. Uh Uh-huh. How do they even find that information? Well, to be fair, I don't exactly know. Like, the the doxing thing got shut down really fast, uh, luckily. Um, Uh I'm assuming it was probably through, like, Discord or something. Uh Because it's like Sorbet and Barry specifically are very active on Discord and have, like, their own groups or Uh servers. Um, But Barry very publicly works at a maid cafe which i'll get into um so it's easy to see the address of that oh so it wasn't their home addresses no i don't know exactly what it is all i know is that you know they got doxxed and typically that entails that their house or their wherever wherever they live got publicized because Mm -hmm. barry like if it was the maid cafe thing, then it wasn't an actual doxing, and I don't think they would post about it. Um, right. But yeah, so they got doxed, and then people kind of shut it down because, like, yes, there's room for you know debate on whether this is an appropriate thing, like them making this um, idol group and making this video and acting the way they do that's something that you can debate and discuss and there's like room for growth in that situation but as soon as the internet docks them everyone was like okay we're shutting this down um people are taking it way too far do you have any thoughts so far thoughts about anything the thoughts about the dox thing or thoughts about anything in the story up till now well uh, it certainly sounds like your typical internet scenario (laughs) yeah and i do agree that i mean you saw my initial reaction it's unsettling Mm -hmm. you're a little uncomfortable doesn't feel like the best or best thing the, the doxing thing is not surprising, but it's shocking in the sense that it's not a great, it's not the right thing to be doing. For sure. I am curious a little bit about the maid cafe thing. Oh yeah, we're, we're going to get into it. Don't worry. Yeah. But right now I am, right now I'm not the most, I don't want to say outrage. That's not the right word. I'm not the most shocked at this very moment. Uh Uh-huh. Just because they're not the first group of people to be doing something like this. I remember, I mean, if if you're a real one, Mm -hmm. a real consumer or follower of Asian pop culture and music, Mm -hmm. you would have already heard of EXP. Oh, yeah and then other groups like that and so i'm not the most shocked at this very moment Uh uh-huh yeah um i am i don't know if i want to say i'm excited to hear more i'm intrigued and a little scared Mm -hmm. yeah so moving on from after they got dogs oh and by the way the the timeline from like the initial video coming out to them getting doxxed and then um, making that video being like, hey, we got doxxed, we're going to take a break. Um, It was very short. I want to say two weeks max. I want to say one week, but I'm not exactly sure. Um, So I'm going to say two. Yeah. 
Okay, so they got doxxed. Um, from there, there was a little bit of radio silence. Um, it was just people mainly continuing with the um, cringe videos, cringe, like making fun of them. People were making um, satire accounts, acting like fans, but really it was just people making fun of them again. Oh, dear. Yeah. Um, and then I know that the East Asian member came out with an apology either on TikTok or Instagram. I'm not exactly sure. But they came out with an apology being like, hey, sorry, I was part of the situation. I know I should be doing better, blah, blah, blah. And everyone responded being like, we're not mad at you. (laughs) So that apology was kind of like swept under the rug because everyone's like, why are you apologizing? Um, Oh, because they're East Asian? Well, well, that's part of it. But I think people were mainly upset with Barry because Barry was the one who like, spoke in Japanese for their caller and response uh the one who's clearly the most energetic and the leader right okay because like um the East Asian members call and response was about like mahjong right yeah yeah so people although it did have actually uh, never mind what I think didn't it have Japanese elements to it I she was referring to the character on the mahjong not in Chinese. Does that make oh, sense? Because when she said home, that is Chinese. I see. But then she said she referred to the character as something that's not oh, Chinese. I see. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. Um that's but okay. a lot of people like even um oh, the other member, the one who was wearing <laughs> green. <laughs> uh-huh. Um, oh yeah, she just said like lucky lucky uh and then her name. Yeah, yeah. Alice, Alice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, people were mad at her either. People were upset with Barry. Okay. Um, specifically because, you know, Barry like said strawberry and blueberry in such a in an accent, essentially, right? Um, yeah, I I noticed that. If you yeah. if you got me on camera, you would have seen me <laughs> cringing or grooving yeah. a little. It's ugh. I mean we'll get into it so mm-hmm. Barry after a little bit of radio silence it felt like a long time honestly like I would have preferred a faster apology um but again the internet moves so fast so it mm-hmm. could have been it a really does. reasonable timeline just especially the sorbet situation happened so fast it was popular and then it was gone instantly yeah and- that's social media yeah Um, so Barry came out with an apology Um, it was on I think it was their personal TikTok not exactly sure Um, but it was a TikTok and just a warning I did I cannot find the full apology so the apology that people are going to watch on the screen and Tiffany (laughs) the apology that you guys are going to am I not a person you're not a person on this well technically you are a person on the screen anyways no no I meant can you said that people are gonna watch and Tiffany am I not am I not people no you're not um anyway okay um um the video is literally like popcorn style clips that I've mashed together because I cannot find the full (laughs) um it's also so cropped so I very much apologize because I'm getting it from React channels. <laughs> so like the way that they're cropping the video is already bad. Um, my apologies. But before, <laughs> very DIY. Yeah, pretty much. Um, before I ex or uh, have you guys watch, I'll just explain it a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. Barry essentially apologizes and says that you know I was using katakana, which is um. In certain English words in katakana would it don't have their own Japanese word. Mm-hmm. It's basically just the English word, but essentially just like in a Japanese accent. Yeah. Um, and that is correct. Like Barry's not making that up. Uh strawberry and blueberry are not like in that isn't an alphabet. I'm not exa- exactly sure. But in katakana, strawberry and blueberry have no word from themselves 
it's just strawberry and blueberry but said in like a Japanese accent Mm -hmm. um which is a very valid point in my opinion however Barry then makes it aggressive yeah Barry makes it like 10 times worse because they decide to say oh yeah my boyfriend is Japanese (laughs) and um he helped me like come up with this call and response um and like there was no issue with it you know so so she was using the I have a Japanese boyfriend yes Um, in the car like I have a insert yeah friend yeah so that being said I'm gonna get you guys to watch the apology right now and this is Barry I just wanted to hop on really quick and address my call and response in Sorbet's latest TikTok video. So first off, I just want to start out by saying that I genuinely and wholeheartedly apologize to every single person that I have upset or that I have offended with my call and response. I truly did not have any ill intent, but I also understand that I have hurt a lot of people and for that I am sorry. I, as a white person, have an insane amount of privilege and I will never truly understand the struggles that people of color go through. And I did not mean to undermine or ignore or disregard any of those struggles. And I am sorry. I, my call and response is in Japanese, despite Sorbet releasing music in English, is because when I eventually have my own tracks, I plan to release solo music almost exclusively in Japanese. And I figured that since I'm the same person, whether I'm solo or in a group, that I could use the same call and response in both instances. Also, my boyfriend, who is Japanese, unintentionally came up with part of my call and response. Um, One day we were just talking about my idol career and on a whim he just made up something that since my call and response is in Japanese, that if I pronounced the words strawberry and blueberry, the way that the katakana would be read out loud, that it would be okay. And I see now that I was wrong. How did that apology, even though I don't think it was the whole thing, that was pretty much the whole thing, how do you feel about that? I feel like I'm in therapy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) That's not how the video made me feel, just the way you asked me that question. (laughs) It, It was an interesting apology to me because from the in the first half it seemed genuine like she was saying the right thing or they were saying the right thing that's all it is Mm -hmm. and I guess I can't sit there and be like they're lying or they're not really apologizing it's like Uh I I guess I can't I can't say that because I don't Uh But then there was the shift to the boyfriend thing that I thought was a little unnecessary. Mm-hmm. Because I, I don't know how that relates. I mean, it relates, obviously it does, because Barry was saying that their boyfriend, who's Japanese, came up with the top call and response. But I don't know, it feels would you have mentioned that if you didn't have a Japanese boyfriend mm-hmm. say it was a non-Japanese person that came up with that I don't think Barry would have mentioned it mm-hmm. because there was just a sudden mention of oh, my, and my boyfriend who is Japanese yeah. was actually the one who came up with it unintentionally yeah. We were talking about my idol career. It feel it feels a little bit of like a it feels like an excuse. Mm-hmm. For sure. I completely agree. Mm-hmm. And then so that was kind of weird. The solo track thing, sure. I sure. Yeah. With the I, benefit I, of the doubt. Sure. I, yeah. I don't I don't even I don't even know how to respond to that. I, yeah. I don't I don't want to dog on it. Yeah. Um uh, this is me 
getting nitpicky, but at the end, when Barry was saying, I see, I see now that I was wrong, it feels more like, and I mean, it's not, it's not even a feel. If, if no one was mad, then there wouldn't be an apology. Yeah. But the, I see now that I was wrong, it basically, they didn't think it was wrong. And I mean, yeah, they didn't think it was wrong. That's just the truth. They didn't think it was wrong in their uh-huh. mind, I think, because people are saying they're wrong. But the, the wording rubbed me off a little. I guess it was an honest an honest opinion, but it, mm-hmm. it rubbed me a little wrong. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. It was like, I don't know. You didn't see the issue with that, but again. Yeah, because I guess I'm not surprised that they didn't see an issue with it. There's a reason uh-huh. why they went through with it all. Yeah, yeah. Just, oh, okay. It is kind of funny that in that initial video, or, or not in that, from that initial video, so much happened, and they have to apologize for their first video. Yeah. That, that was their first ever video, was it? Um, wait, what do you oh, mean? Oh, wait, no, you said no, right, because you said that they had, like, behind-the-scenes stuff. Okay, never mind, take it back. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so after the apology came out, um, people began to, you know, like, be like, like, chill out a little bit. People were like, oh, that's a valid point. Um, a lot of people, especially after the doxing situation, the combination of the apology plus the doxing situation, people are like, you're taking this way too seriously. Um, this is just clearly someone trying to have fun. Like, yes, admittedly, it's a little bit cringy, but it's just someone trying to have fun. Mm -hmm. Um, But then a little bit more came out, which is kind of where we are currently. Um, So would you say this is a developing situation or has it fully ended? I think I would say that it's fully unraveled at this point. It's just more people like it's more discussion being had right now. Noted. Yeah. So after the apology um certain people um came out with their own tiktoks and just posts basically um explaining that hey yeah barry apologized but we want to point out that we are from the same area as barry we have mutuals in real life or i know barry i've met them before um and barry is a known fetishizer in their area a known fetishizer yeah so again people people i don't think it was like known or general knowledge before this but people were saying like hey barry works at a maid cafe barry like on on their instagram they cosplay their captions are in japanese um they sing in japanese they're very clearly very into Japanese culture and people were saying that Barry is a fetishizer um I think that there is quite a good amount of proof for that um oh there's proof well I think not necessarily proof but there's good like evidence um I think the same thing yeah well yeah yeah um I don't I wouldn't say it's like proving that they're a fetish- fetishizer because ultimately I don't think Barry has ill intentions in mind um they very clearly just really like Japanese culture and you know mm-hmm. um and it's pretty much harmless like you know they're not like butchering the language or like taping their eyes back and stuff like that um in my eyes which uh, we'll get into even more but it's very harmless but also a lot of people or not a lot of people but people on a specific discord I'm not exactly sure it wasn't mean public but there is a discord that Barry is on with some people and after the sorbet situation um Barry initially posted on discord um a like quote unquote apology. Now I can't find the screenshot. Um but it was basically them deflecting even more um and not really apologizing. Mm-hmm. 
it was very much like I'm speaking like I'm I'm actually speaking in Japanese I'm not speaking a Japanese accent my boyfriend um is Japanese period like there was no like okay apology um so when that was made public people were like oh okay um and I believe you could probably if you deep dive on TikTok enough you could probably find um the specific discord and like other messages that Barry has sent on here um but okay it's worth that but that is kind of where the situation is right now people you know discussing um the harm of the situation or the like overreaction to the situation a lot of people have mixed feelings um I think generally most people agree that it's just cringy um and that the doxing was too far it definitely was no one deserved yeah. to be doxed. no no um but there is a lot of discussion and debate over whether this should be a situation where people are upset or not um mm-hmm. so yeah I kind of wanted to have that discussion ourselves um what do you think I think well the internet is pretty crazy I if I had come across this on my own if I had come across not necessarily the situation but that viral video or whatever mm-hmm. I probably would have watched it thought it was a little unsettling and then moved on with my day mm-hmm. and I agree with you it was pretty harmless it was it was a little it, it you raise an eyebrow yeah when you when you watch that video and everything it there's certainly something weird about mm-hmm. some of the behavior and then the, oh, yeah. the Japanese boyfriend thing is very interesting yeah like why I, would you throw that in mm-hmm. and then when you told me that they're a known fetish either the thing is have we or had we if I didn't know someone mm-hmm. if you and I didn't know someone that was is also kind of a known oh 1000 percent. this is that I know who you're thinking about and that is exactly who I thought about when I heard of the situation sorry continue <laughs> <laughs> If we didn't know someone that was like this, then I would think that it was a kind of strange to call someone a known fetishizer. Uh-huh. Kind of a dramatic label, but yeah. Knowing that person, I I I I can see. I mean, I don't know Barry, but you know mm-hmm. what I mean. I can kind of, I can kind of follow. I can kind of yeah. Make, for sure I can kind of connect the dot yeah based off of the precedent (laughs) yeah but yeah I mean it's definitely a strange situation it did get out of hand with the doxing and everything Mm -hmm. and so are they not do they not exist anymore um oh so yeah um sorbet has since I don't know I haven't really been keeping up to like when this happened but Sorbet like their TikTok account has no posts anymore um it still exists though it still exists but they've deleted everything okay Um, I know at a certain point before they deleted everything um Barry made an Instagram post basically being like hey after recent events um I'm back Uh, and I plan on releasing music still um Uh and like the comments are clearly limited um because everyone's just like oh yay so happy um Uh but yeah it's been sorbet I'm pretty sure they're like gonna be taking a break for a while now Mm -hmm. yeah I mean uh, I would too yeah not that I would ever partake do this yeah yeah um I wonder if the whole formation works there's two white people and then one East Asian person. Mm. Cause I mean EXP also had one Asian member. Yeah.
it's the situation is just it's weird because personally like I completely understand the argue of the argument argue <laughs> the yeah. argument of um this feeding into the bigger issue fetish fetishization however I think that it's such like Sorbet and Barry they were clowned so much on the internet so I think most people can recognize that this is not like it we shouldn't be doing this it's cringy um people don't it, like it it, 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 was, it was cyber bullying yeah um like the initial reaction I think that was warranted people making fun of them um whatever like it is kind of cringy like you know two white people one east asian person trying to make a japanese idol group based in california speaking japanese whatever it's kind of cringy um but i personally think and i'm pretty sure you think so too like this situation was taken way too far the dots yeah. way too far um i think i think I'm a, I'm a firm believer in you know some people like I actually no. I was gonna say I'm a firm believer. <laughs> I guess you're not that firm. <laughs> in that, um, some people need to like not bu be bullied, but have some sort of like reality check and realize that like, oh, people don't actually like this because again, it is like cringy behavior. Um, but I think at this scale, it's too much. Yeah, I mean that's the thing with the internet, right? You mm -hmm. you you set something out into the world, and then if people don't like it they might really not like it uh-huh and so I do feel bad about the volume in which they got that uh and uh, the volume of, in the response that they got does that make sense the, yeah it was a lot yeah it's mm, it's kind of upsetting to me because I think, again, as I was saying this earlier, there's so much room for, like, discussion and actual change and growth from the situation, but because be people blew it out of proportion and, you know, there was a lot of bullying and doxing and all that, like, after it takes or it passes a certain line, it's impossible to, like, take a step back and be like, hey, um, from a like very serious standpoint this was wrong or this is why people were upset like we can't have that conversation after too many boundaries are crossed because no one's going to listen anymore does that make sense yeah mm -hmm. so yeah just it was such a like weird thing to happen on tiktok mm -hmm. um People started like finding their tops and the skirts from Sheen um, and were like posting, being like, oh, uh, Sorbet cosplay. Um, here are the links to all the clothes, which, you know, I, it's kind of funny. But um, again, there could have been a conversation. Um, but one, it's not that serious. And two, people took it way too far. Yeah, I don't think I would have. I mean, I, I never, but I mean, when I say I never, I mean, I, I never engage in spreading yeah. hate comments on the internet or uh -huh. writing any, like, anything negative. I don't like it. I just, I don't know, put not interested or I, maybe I'll send it to Rian and be like, well, what is going on? But I, I would never like go out of my, I would never actually engage with it. And mm -hmm. it definitely, it did go, it, it is out of hand. I, th I, there's a part of me that does feel bad for them. Yeah. And there's, there's a part of me, because I, I recognize the whole Japanese boyfriend thing, or the, it's kind of weird, kind of, kind of iffy. But I, there is a part of my heart that is a little, well, that kind of sucks. Mm-hmm.
some of my thoughts and feelings. Uh, Sounds that, pretty intense. Yeah. Um, just a weird situation in general. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Again, I'm so on the fence between like, that sucks and I feel bad, or I should just be like, why Why does anyone care in the first place? Like, <laughs> this is not that serious, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I really would have scrolled away. This is something that would only happen on the internet. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's, it's very, like, chronically online, honestly. Mm -hmm. Could you actually explain what that means to the audience? Oh, yes. So, chronically online, it's kind of self-explanatory, but it's um just, you're, it's just, like, problems, or if you say, like, this is chronically online, it just means that, like, it's so clearly an issue that only arises because people, like, get stuck online and stuck in these, like, deep dives or niche topics um, and get upset over something that actually isn't as big of a deal um, uh -huh. in, like, the real world. But online, it's, like, um, kept on a pedestal because people are insane online and need to touch grass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I notice on social media, people fight a lot. I mean... I, I don't have Twitter, but whenever people talk about Twitter, they usually talk about debate and fighting, mm -hmm. just arguing about stuff on Twitter, which doesn't sound like a good, it doesn't sound like it's good for your mental health to mm -hmm. just constantly be angry. Yeah. Oh, I mean, sucks. It was cringy. They didn't deserve to be doxxed, but mm -hmm. you know there is clearly some more context um, that could probably be found on like the depths of Discord. But it's not that serious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it shouldn't be that serious. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think that also leads me to ask, like, what do you guys think, people listening? We want to know if this is just like a niche topic or not. It probably, I have a feeling it's a very niche topic. It is. It is. I, just well, for one, uh, thank you for taking me on this internet deep, deep <laughs> dive of something that I genuinely, I had no idea what you were talking about <laughs> when you brought this up to me. And I imagine our audience. I mean, there, there could be people in our audience that already knew about it or had heard about it, but I have a feeling that I kind of represented our audience today mm -hmm. in the sense that I had no idea about this. And so that was, that was very interesting. I learned about, well, not educational, but I, I learned about something. Mm -hmm. I could have gone without. <laughs> yeah. I probably could have gone without that. But hey, let's all let's all take a moment to give Rihanna a prop for putting together this internet deep dive. Thank you. This Thank you. Story because like Rihanna said, usually we come up with an episode together and then we research and write it get all the plot points mm -hmm. but this episode was all Rihanna <laughs> I just I just sat there listening and watching <laughs> so props to Rihanna thank you for doing that yay and do let us know how you thought like how, how you feel about it mm -hmm. I mean as, as, as always thank you for tuning in if you think about it I tuned in today as well yeah true mm -hmm. and so if you are interested in this type of content you want more rihanna rant and i i you know you didn't really rant today i was saying how today could have been like a rihanna rant 
and it could be a thing, but <laughs> you didn't really rant today, so I guess that doesn't really fit. But I digress. Mm -hmm. Let us know if you are interested in the type of content where Rihanna explains things to me, <laughs> and I sit and watch. And Rihanna creates a PowerPoint. I actually, I think it would be fun if you created a PowerPoint. Yeah. And I sat there and watched it. That would be fun, actually. Mm -hmm. Let us know if you guys want to see that. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. So, like we always do at the end of episode, feel free to comment if you knew anything about Sorbet. The thing is, when you told me about the name, Sorbet with a three instead of an E, for some reason, it makes me not want to read it as Sorbet, and it makes me want to read it as Sorbet. Sorbet. I don't know if that's just me. No, Someone yeah. let me know. Same. What did I say? I said, if you knew anything, you're right. And then if you are completely new to this, let us know what your initial reactions were. If your thoughts and feelings changed throughout. Hmm. What do you think about the idea of an American Asian inspired band? Yeah, do you think it's possible to do? Which is a kind of a whole other episode in itself. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is a good episode. <laughs> gotta go right now. Yeah, let us know. And I am curious what people think about the Japanese boyfriend thing. Mm -hmm. I did think it was a weird note. So, yes. It would be kind of messed up if they did it. It would. That would be messed up. Mm -hmm. I'll, give, I'll give the benefit though. I don't know you. Rough. Mm -hmm. And let us know what you thought of the call response. I'm kind of curious. Yeah. No hate to the last one, really. It's just a little more. I mean, it's cool, but it's not definitely not fit to be a call and response. If you guys like this episode and want to stay connected with us, check out our website in the description. It contains links to our streaming platforms, such as Spotify, Anchor, Apple Podcasts, and more. Follow us for more behind-the-scenes content, announcements, and other random things we decide to put on there. See you next time. Bye. Bye.